welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela, and today I'm going to be sharing you with you guys my gastric sleeve surgery. It's been two years since I've had my gastric sleeve surgery, and I know a lot of you on my Instagram have asked me so many questions. So here it is, my q and I did ask you guys on Instagram to ask me some questions about it, what you want to know. And I'm going to tell you my story first, and then I'm going to go in with the Q&A kind of questions. I think that will be like the easiest, um, just because there is a few questions in there asking like how I went, like how to, how to go and stuff, uh, or how do you go about it. So I'm going to do that. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up for me and definitely follow me on my Instagram. That is where I do post um, if you want to ask me any questions for Q&As. I post all my fashion, beauty and everything like that on there. So definitely give me a follow on there to support me. And yeah, I'll um, get into my story. So starting off, I had the gastric sleeve surgery um, in July 2018. So it is coming up to the two year mark. Now, okay, so I don't even know where to start. I wasn't, okay, no, you know what? I'll start from where it hit the most. My mum had a heart attack. So my mother, I was coming back from America with my friend and I literally got a call from my dad um, as soon as we landed in Australia and I got a call in Brisbane saying that my mum had had a heart attack at, I think it was the MCG or the footy grand, the footy there. So that really hit me. That, um that really got to me. So my mum went under, um, she's actually had the surgery as well. So because of her, um, our genetics, uh, we have actually got um, high cholesterol in our family. Uh, I'm 11.5. Yeah, that is really bad. An average person is two. And it's just, hereditary it's just in our family um it's just that I can have a heart attack at 30 that's what I was looking at and because my mum had the gastric sleeve surgery um, and it brought her cholesterol down I thought I would do the same um, to see how it would go and bring mine down so I wasn't a weight um like my weight was a problem but it wasn't like a big problem. I was 97 kilos when I started uh, the gastric sleeve surgery. I was well underweight. I wasn't the weight required. Uh, I don't know what the weight was to require, but I know it's over a hundred and I think it's like 120 or something. Or I'm, I'm not actually sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm you. It's different with other places, but who I went through um, because my mother had the surgery they were like, yep, nah, we'll put you through straight away um, because you have that cholesterol and everything. So that is how I um, was allowed to have it. Um, so I was definitely not the weight barrier. I was more the I was going to have um, a heart attack at 30, pretty much. Now, the process was that I had to get a... Uh, my GP to refer me to another GP. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but, and then I was referred to my surgeon, Dr. Andrew Russell in Rockhampton. That is who my mother went through um, because my mother went through him. I was going to go through him um, just because it was just that it was easier. So when I saw him, yes, he said, yep, okay, we're going to you're going to go through the gastric sleeve surgery. Um, and then it was pretty much, how do you want to pay? Um, and I had to get all this information and stuff pretty much like I got to get like an anesthetist. I got to choose an anesthetist. Um, because I wasn't actually paying, it was eight grand all up. 
Um, I wasn't paying out of pocket. If you were paying it yourself, that would have been, it would have been fine. Like it took me a while to do this, but if you had the eight grand, easy peasy, you're all good to go pretty much. But because I was going through my super, which you can go through your super, it's just a painful effort to go through your super. You've got to get like um, every quote you can get. So you need to get quotes from your anesthetist, your surgeon, your um, dietitian, anything that's going to put you out of pocket. You need to write that list, get all that information, get all those documents and then you go onto MyGov and there's a form that you can fill out um, and pretty much um, put all the details in and how much it's going to cost you and how much you want to take out of your super. Now, there is a 30-day turnaround. Um, took me ages. It, I will say it is the most painfulest thing of the world. I absolutely hated doing it. It was so annoying because I missed something on my form and I had to redo it again and it had to do a turnaround. So... Pretty much once I had that form, then or once they gave me that form, then I was, I had to send that to my superannuation and that took a week, literally like I sent that information and that doc, all the documents to my super and I saw the money within a week and then I paid my surgeon pretty much. I paid the bill. Um, I did go through private health because I was cut like on private health. So I did go through privately. I was in a private hospital and everything like that. So that was really good. I did get a rebate back, but it wasn't much. It was like 1,300 or something. But other than that, it was eight grand all up. I got 1,300 back. Um, yeah. So once that all happened, um, I was right to start booking in for my surgery. So Oh, sorry, rewind back a little bit. Um, while I was waiting for those forms, I had to go to the nutritionist and they talked to me about how I have to be on shakes two weeks before my surgery. Um, you need to lose six kilos before you go into surgery. You need to make your stomach very small um, so they can like cut away at it uh so yeah they just pretty much I went through like all that kind of stuff um first and then once I had a date for my surgery then two weeks prior that I needed to lose two uh six kilos now that six kilos I will tell you you can lose six kilos in two weeks if you're on these shakes there were the opti slim shakes I was taking so pretty much I had an opti slim shake for breakfast lunch snack and then at dinner I had a cup full of veggies that is all I ate for two weeks it was painful that was worse than after surgery I'll tell you that it was horrible I absolutely hated it I hated it so much the girls at my work when I was working at Lorna Jane oh they they knew my pain they knew my pain so I as the surgery day, I went in, I went in with my bags, I sat in the surgery, uh, ready, waiting, um, I got called in, they prepped me pretty much how you'd normally prepped if you've had surgery before, like they shave all like your areas or where they're going to stick the needles and all that kind of stuff in, you know, yeah. um, I went in, I saw my anesthetist and I, they laid me down and I was out, gone, I was... The surgery was over. It was pretty much done. Um, I woke up in a bed in pain, um, but still really druggy. Um, they were just, they put me in like, they hadn't taken me to my room yet, um, but I was just in this area. And then I fell back asleep because I was just so tired. And um, I woke up again and they were moving me to my room. And I, as soon as I got into my room, my parents... And my partner, Ned, was there and I was like so happy. I was crying, um, but I was dozing in and out. Like apparently it was really funny, um, but it was so good to see them because I was just, I was so scared. Like I've never had surgery. That was my major surgery. I've never had that before. And yeah, I was just so excited to see them. And then I passed out pretty much. And then I woke up the next day. 
And then the next day, I was in hospital for three days and it was painful. It was, I'm not going to lie, it was painful. I was in so much pain. I had like this tube in my stomach. Um, I had, I was hooked up to a catheter, I think it's called. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. I couldn't get up. I couldn't go to the toilet. I couldn't do anything like, and I didn't eat for that first day because you're not hungry. You literally don't feel like eating at all. And I literally watched that much like TV of food shows. I wasn't even hungry at all. But the second day they bring, they brought me um, like chicken broth soup. No, beef broth. It was literally, if you put noodle beef broth, like the two minute noodle, like sachet into a cup of water, that's what it was. If you stuck like a broth cube into a cup of water, that's what it was. It was nasty. That is all I ate. That is all I could, you could stomach. You could not stomach anything. You weren't allowed to have anything. You literally had to have liquid. You had to have liquid, I'm pretty sure, for two weeks. Um, so they suggested to go on to like those Opti Slims again. And I was, I refused. I just had my own protein shake. So they were fine. They said that anything liquid you can have. Um, so that's what I did. I had my own protein shakes. Two weeks, so it was interval. So two weeks I was on liquid. Two weeks after that, I was on like a puree kind of like a smoothie consistency, which I was so excited for. Uh, and then after that, um, I was on like mashed potato consistency. So that was all up about six weeks. And then at after that, I could have, I could eat like soft food. Um, that was very hard. It was very, very, very hard, especially going from not like going from normal eating to I can't eat anything at all. And like going out to lunch and things like that was very hard in those six weeks period. Um, it was, it was very hard. Like it's not easy. You you just want to like eat a burger. Like you'd see, I'd see Ned eating a burger and I just want to eat it. You can't, it was literally impossible. Um, but you needed to take like vitamins and things like that. So I had to take a lot of vitamins, um, all that kind of stuff, which you need to do. You need to take your vitamins because it's just, yeah, definitely. If you're going to be doing it, take definitely take your vitamins. And even taking a hair vitamin before you start um, your um, surgery is a really good key too. I, I wish I had known that beforehand, but take a hair vitamin um, because you will lose hair. Because of rapid weight loss, I lost a lot of hair. Um, just thinning, I lost a lot of, like my hair was really long. Um, this is not my hair, you could probably tell, but um, my hair was really long, but it was thin. Because of weight loss, you just, it just, yeah, it comes out. So you will lose hair, but it will grow back in time because you're taking vitamins. So that was pretty much my, um, like pretty much story of what I went through. So I was 97 kilos. I got down to 62 kilos. Um, and that was within probably like, I had the surgery July, I think, um, by looking at my calendar, or a photo. I don't have many before and after photos. I'm really sorry. I'll put some photos. You can really notice it in my face a lot. I've noticed it more in my face than anything. Um, but even my partner, like even Ned was like, wow, you look so different, like from here to here. Like, so from July, 2018 to May, I was 62 kilos and that's where I stayed. I didn't go anything below that. I didn't want to go anything below that. I was happy at being that. Um, I would always fluctuate from being 62 to 64, which was, I really didn't mind. It doesn't bother me. Like I'm, I was happy, healthy. Yeah. And then like eating as well, it got 
easier to eat, I will say, like, um, I know this sounds really gross, but if you ate too much, you will vomit it back up. Um, that's just your reflex. It's called a vial. And I know I, I did that a lot because I wasn't prepared. Like I, like even those six weeks, like once you can start eating like normal food, you go to eat like something like a toast or something, anything like that, a lot more harder. Um, it was very hard because, and then like you'd get vile, like it was felt like it stuck, was stuck here and you just like a spit pretty much. And you just got to get it out. It's disgusting, but yeah. Um, but I will say that till this day, like it still happens. It still happens if I overeat, um, I will have to vomit it up because it's just, yeah. Cause I keep thinking I can still eat more than I think I can. Um, I still vomit it up because I get that vial. And for people that have had the surgery will understand, like, it's not a nice feeling. It's just like, yeah, it's just a white liquidy kind of like stuff. It's not nice. Okay. So I'm going to answer these questions that I have on my phone. Um, like how much was it? It was eight grand all up. Take the 1,300 off because of my Medibank private because um, I was covered through that side of things. So that's pretty much how much it was. And I got it through my superannuation. Um, I did weigh 97 kilos before my surgery. That was another question. So I've got another one. No question, but you should post before and after photos. I'm three years post-op, 60 kg. Um, now, I'm a bit weird about that because technically, like, I know it is a big thing, um, but I don't post before and after photos um, on my Instagram because technically, like, I didn't earn it. I didn't earn losing weight. Like, I didn't exercise and things like that. Like, the only thing I did was not eat a lot. Um, like I exercise now, like I've been exercising, but I didn't work hard for it. Um, like it was a painful process, but I didn't work hard and I'm not going to put up a progress shot of me weighing this much and putting up something like that because it wasn't, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it as a thing. Um, it was more my health and having, like it was more the health side of things. I don't see that I need to put a process photo up. I have put photos up before and a lot of people have said like, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But, and they've asked me, like, I'm not ashamed to say that I've had the surgery. It's because I've had it. Um, I could, could prevent me from having a heart attack. So yeah, it's, that's how it is. I just don't want to put up progress photos. Ah, this is an interesting question. I love this one. Can you drink alcohol? So did you start to drink it? Or when did you start to drink it? Um, you can drink alcohol. So it's best to do that. Um, you can start drinking again. I think it was after the six weeks of your surgery, just when you've started, like when it's all healed. Um, usually your surgeon will tell you when you can start drinking again and oh my God, I will say when it was time that I like my surgeon was like, yeah, no, you can start having wine and all that kind of stuff. I became a lightweight. It was great. Like you can still drink, like I drink a lot of like drinks because it's just easier to drink liquid. It's not food, like it's not solid. Anything liquid form like protein smoothies, I freaking love um, because they're so easy. Acai bowls, so easy to have, but I'm such a lightweight now. I really don't need much when I go out to drink. Um, it is so good. It was the best thing ever. Like I'm the cheapest drunk you can get. <laughs> so you can drink. Um, it's just ask your surgeon when you can because all surgeries are different and like it's when you're healing up is when you're fine. I think maybe when your stitches and stuff are out of like is a good time maybe. But yeah, definitely ask your surgeon because yeah, he told me when it was fine. Um, how did your feelings change towards food? 
my feeling towards food has changed. Um, it's uh, when I was going through it. So probably last year, I really noticed it. Um, I hated going out to lunch. I hated going to like breakfast and things like that because I couldn't eat a normal meal. Like I couldn't just pick like a pub meal or anything like that. I couldn't just go and get like whatever I wanted because I would waste, I would have like two bites and I was full. So it was very, um, like that would annoy me. Um, however, like Ned was really good. And also with my mum, when going out to lunch and things with my mum, we would share a meal. It becomes cheaper. Um, I would just eat off Ned's plate. Um, or I'd get like a side plate of something, or I would just, I would just, yeah, really choose like a smaller, like an entree meal. Um, but that's pretty much like, but now like it's a whole lot different. Like now that it like, I don't know, the other day I picked up, I went and got Exmedic. I'll still go and get food, but I just be very, very of what I can eat. Like there are things that I can't eat well, like rice is very hard to eat. Um, I love pasta, but it is very hard. So I really need to like proportion myself. Um, steak and things like that. I have like the small size, like really, you can really, like you're meant to be only eating your palm. I eat less than that. Um, just, you just got to know what to eat and what not to eat. Um, but yeah, like I find that th it's really weird. Like I find having rice crackers, I can eat rice crackers. I can eat like those kind of like vital wheat things all the time. Like I can just snack on them and I don't feel like I get to a point where I don't need any more, but I can just eat them and it's good. Like, um, I had a wrap before now, this is what I do. Like, no, it's so weird, but I will start eating. This is why I love eating at home. Um, eating out is a bit hard. Like it does take me ages, but eating at home, I will eat it. I will eat what I can and then I'll put it down and I'll come back to it like 30 minutes later or an hour later and I'll eat it, eat, eat a bit more. Like I'm not like, and then I'm not wasting it. It's just eating like in proportion. So um, like I had, like I'll say, I had a chicken wrap just before for dinner. Um, I ate, I started eating it at five. Um, and then I think I got to 5.30 and I ate a bit more. And then at six o'clock, so I finished it. So it took me an hour to eat, but hey, I managed to f eat it all and I didn't waste anything. So yeah, I just, that's how I go about it. Like it's, it's just easier for me. Um, I will go probably get like something to snack on later, but I always snack. I'm always snacking on things um, just because it is very easy. But yeah, I just find that make sure you have your vitamins because you don't get enough vitamins from your food. You do need extra. So I will say um, you still don't eat like a normal adult um, like this one. How long till you were able to eat like a normal adult again? Um you don't ever eat like a normal adult ever. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. Um, you'll eat like, I don't know. Me for a normal adult is me ordering like a meal. Just say going out to breakfast and ordering um, an eggs benedict and finishing it. You don't. You don't finish it. No. Um, but there's things like get half serves. Like... I know a place that does half serves all the time where you ask for half serves. Like if I were to eat, go to eat like lunch or something and I wanted a burger, I wouldn't be able to order that. I'd ask Ned if he wanted to share it, but I wouldn't order I wouldn't order a burger. I will never order a burger when I go out to lunch um, or have a drink as well. So like just say you wanted like a drink, like a really nice smoothie and then you wanted a sandwich. I can't do that. I'll either have the sandwich or I have the smoothie. It's pick a pick. So you don't, still to this day, I still don't do that. I don't pick up, I don't pick things like that. Unless like I'll order a smoothie or something and then I'll share something with someone, like a bowl of chips or something, like things like that. Like it's just, that's how it is. Um, I still don't feel like 
I feel normal, but again, like I don't feel normal. And I always have cravings for food. Like now that I am pregnant, um, I'm always craving different things and I know it's bad. But the one thing I notice, like I don't eat a lot of it because just say like I have been having craving for Fruit Loops um, and that is my pregnancy craving. I don't eat a lot of them. So I feel like I'm not getting fat, but yeah, it's just, I got to pick what I got to eat and I got to eat healthy. And it's hard because it's like, do I go for my craving? Do I go for the healthy option? It's so hard. Um, but as long like, and that was like another question, how's it affecting my pregnancy? I am taking a lot of precautions. I'm talking to Brisbane hospitals. I go to, I get blood tests every four weeks. I talk, yeah, I talk to the Brisbane hospital every four weeks um, I go and see my midwife as well. I'm just, yeah, I was on vitamins upon vitamins upon vitamins. And um, yeah, it's it's something that is affecting, like it will affect my baby because I'm not eating enough. Um, that's why I have to have the vitamins and to keep track of my blood, like my everything. Um, but again, like that's probably another reason why my baby bump isn't so big because the baby's probably going to come out a lot smaller, which is fine. Like it is fine. And another thing as well, um, I wasn't allowed to be pregnant until a year after my surgery. That was another thing as well. You can't become pregnant until a year after your surgery. Um, that was what my doctor said. <laughs> this is a juicy one. Did you ever fall back into old habits with food? I never went out of them. <laughs> I love chocolate. I'm human. Like, I'll eat chocolate, but I can't eat a lot of it. Um, or like things that I love to eat, like pasta. I love gnocchi. I'll still eat it. I will eat whatever I want. It's just I have small portions of it because I can't eat a lot of it. So... Yeah, I I think it's I don't know. I I still eat what I want, but it's only a small portion. So it's pretty much the size of what you were actually meant to be having. It's just we people like us, we overeat. And I know I am, I'm Italian, I overeat. Um but because of having that I can't go into that stage of like that vile stage. I know where I got to stop and that's couple of mouthfuls. Hey, a couple of mouthfuls on gnocchi will satisfy me for ages. Like, or a bit of chocolate will satisfy me for like ages. Like, you know how it says like, you're only allowed like a row or something. Well, well, I can eat two rows, but yeah, I can't eat any more than that. Like, yeah, I will say being pregnant, I have had, I've been going back into a lot of my areas that I wish that I didn't go back into, but it is is what it is. I am craving food. I'm not going to say no when I'm craving it or I'll become a crazy pregnant lady. Um, <laughs> but again, like I've been trying to walk. I've been trying to do all that kind of stuff and trying trying to eat better because of the bub. Um, but yeah, I will. if I want something, I will have it because I know I can't eat a much of it. Um, has it impacted your physical health, energy, and hormones in any other way? It really, since losing 30-ish kilos, so what, like 97 to like 62, 30 something kilos, I feel so much better. I didn't realize how much weight I was carrying. I just feel more active as well. Like, Again, at the moment, I'm in hormone stage. I am so tired, but I'm trying to get up and do stuff. Um, but I just felt more happy, more confident. Um, I hated what I look like. I know that sounds so stupid to say we should love each other. Like, yeah. But like, I just felt confident because I could fit into a pair of jeans mum jeans I could never fit into a pair of mum jeans and I just felt more confident about myself I just felt really happy and I felt I don't know I noticed me being so much more happier about myself and yeah I just and even like even my friends noticed how much I had changed 
I just, yeah, from being this little shy person going out of my comfort zone and even doing YouTube, like, and getting out there and doing my content and stuff, I just felt a lot more happier about myself. Um, I know I, I, I did go through a lot of depression as well, um, which is really sad. Like, I shouldn't be going through depression and things like that, but I did. I went through depression. I went, th- I looked at people on Instagram and I just felt so like sad about myself and things like that. But I know like in the, like in, like in that like period, I shouldn't be feeling like that. I shouldn't have, but I just did. Like, you can't say no one does feel like that sometimes. And I feel like I understand for other people who have been through that. Um, but no, I feel I feel so much better. I feel more active. I I just feel a lot more happier and I'm smiling a lot more and I'm in a place at the moment where I'm really happy. If you knew what you know now, would you still have had it done? Yeah, I definitely would have still had this done for sure. Um now that I know like what, like where it's put me and stuff, I would definitely have this surgery. Um, I will say to people like it is a big step to take. It is a massive step to take and you really got to be, be prepared for it and pre- be prepared. Like I know it sounds horrible, but be prepared to hate food. Like the feeling of like having to go out and stuff. Like I don't mind it now. It doesn't really bother me, but like, Just like I will look at like, I don't know. I miss a pub feed. That's all I'll say. I miss having a big crumb steak with gravy and chips and going to have that out. Like, yo, if you love things like that, you'll never be able to do that again. I'm sorry. Sorry, but you can share it, but you won't be able to have your own. It's just, yeah. I'll, but I would still have the surgery to this day because of how it made me feel and how like happy I am now. Um, so this is a good question. Did you have any loose skin afterwards? I've been thinking about getting it done, but I'm scared. Um, well, it really depends. I don't have loose skin, but I do have, it's not like, Oh, I don't know how you'd say it, but I just needed to tone areas and I didn't like the gym. I hate the gym, but when I have this baby, I do want to tone up. So, oh, sorry. I do want to tone up. So I'm definitely going to try and like do walking and stuff just to kind of tone up. But I noticed like I did, I didn't have the flat. I didn't have a flat stomach. God, no. I had like a normal person's, well, not even normal, but I just had a normal stomach. I didn't have like a crazy abs or anything, um, but I didn't have any loose skin. It because I'm so young. Um, I am what 25, 20, yeah, I'm twenty five. Um, turning twenty six this year. I didn't. I'm still got that elasticity in my skin. And again, I wasn't like a big person. I wasn't like very very overweight. Um, I was in like I was in the overweight, but I wasn't like big big so I didn't have any loose skin my mum because of how old she is she has some loose skin but that's just because of her age she is she was 58 when she had her surgery so yeah it really depends um I don't know like if what you will have but um I know that with my private health if you have loose skin um you can get it taken off with your private health I know I think I have um I've been wanting to do it so badly is get a boob job um just to kind of like I love having no boobs it's great but now because I'm pregnant I'm starting to get my boobs back again and I hate them I hate boobs sorry I just hate them Uh, big girls you probably hate them too they just hurt your back and everything I don't want boobs I want a flat ish chest so I thought about getting my boobs done um, because my private health covers it because it's I can class it as loose skin loose skin (laughs) Um, which is something I wouldn't mind doing but I don't know if I'll ever like 
do that just yet. I'll see how I go with having kids and maybe after that I might. But other than that, that's probably the only thing like is my boobs really is like, yeah, I don't have any other loose skin anywhere. So they are all the questions that you guys um, asked me. Like I see, I don't know if I've put them up, but I'll try and find some before and after photos. Um, I don't know what happened. I think because I got a new phone, I like lost a lot of my pictures, but I'll try and put some up here for you guys um, to like see. But again, like I wasn't a big, big girl, like um, 97 kilos down to 62. Like I did change a lot, but again, like I did notice it in my face. Um, but if you're wanting to get it done, like if you're looking at getting it done, it is entirely up to you. Um, I, I love the surgery. I know it's not an uncommon thing. Like I know a lot of people that have this surgery, like my mom, I know two other people, three, four, Four people I could just have the top of my head I know is how to have done. Like there's a lot of people that had it done. And I've even when working, like a lot of people knew I was getting it done and they asked me questions because they were getting it done. And a lady that I knew from work um, had it done. I know a lot of men have had it done. It's just, it's not uncommon anymore. Like it's just... It, anyone's really had it done a lot of people you wouldn't even know who's had it done anymore like it's just a thing like it's it's not hard like but just be prepared prepare yourself um for changing your like you will have to change how you eat um if you eat a lot of food now like if you just gorge on food it will be a dramatic shock to your system um, like I'm an Italian, like I said, I'm an Italian. I love pasta, pizza, everything like that. All the naughty things. My Norna would have like mounds of food on the table. I would tell her every time I'd go to her house in Brisbane and she would make up so much food and I'd be like, Norna, I can't eat it. I can have like a few bites and that's it. Like, yeah, she, it was a big shock, but having a parent there with me doing it is really good. Um, but if you start eating like you're trying to eat and stretching your stomach, you will gain the weight back. I will tell you that you will gain the weight back. So definitely try and restrict yourself when you can and just try and get yourself into a thing, uh, like a, like a habit, like I love smoothies. Smoothies are like the best thing ever. You put protein in it, all your stuff in it, and you're good to go. Like acai bowls are so good. Like, yeah, it's just as well, like cooking for, I cook for like Ned. I pretty much cook for him and then I just have a little bit of what he is eating. But then, yeah, it's it's no big deal. Like I'm not... um fussed over it like when he's away I don't eat much because I don't need to eat much I will just I'll I can live off my pantry because it's yeah now I'm rambling on anyways but yeah if you're going to get the surgery I highly recommend doing some more research about it um I hope you found this very like um I don't even know what to say like helpful for you Again, like a, I'm very happy where I am now and I would definitely do it again if I could. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you do have any more questions, leave me some comments down below and I will get back to you. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you found it very um, helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye.